What is happening guys and welcome back to another episode of Redbeard's Garage. If you've been tuning in to the Argo build, you'll notice we pulled the calipers off in the last video. So today we're going to show you if you have an Argo Magnum 8x8, and this may be the same on a lot of other Argos, but I know on the 8x8 and the 6x6 Magnum, this is going to be how you remove the brake calipers and also rebuild them. Super simple process. It's about $45 a set for each O-ring set for these, uh, but it's really simple. You can do it with basic tools at home. So let's get right on the Argo we'll show you how to remove those calipers and we'll show you how to rebuild them and uh, have brand new calipers on the cheap so our calipers never worked when we first got this we've already rebuilt the master cylinders so we're going to pull both calipers and we've got some rebuild kits for them so you have this hole in the rotor you just rotate it around so you can get an allen through and now we can take this out I'll rotate it right there they are so smooth you do have a washer in there. Get a slide up out of there. So we have the caliper off the Argo and these things are pretty expensive. So we're gonna go ahead and rebuild it instead of replacing it. Uh, this was not the factory brake line. This is a mini bike brake line that I had sitting around. Um, first, we're gonna remove the brake line. I'm gonna pull this banjo bolt out. You can see how crusty all the brake fluid was in this Argo. So it was really, really nasty. So we're gonna use a 13 socket, pull this banjo fitting off. probably going to pour out some fluid you're only going to need a few things to do this this is about the same on a car or go-kart or anything you can rebuild them if you can find the square cut o-rings which are right here there's two square cut o-rings and one small standard o-ring these two big ones are for the piston this one is where the two calipers meet because this unlike a lot of go-karts this has dual pistons a piston pushing on each side to give it more braking power because this is how you're turning on the argo you're just braking each side of the differential so it's extremely important that you have brakes or you're not turning or stopping we're going to use a 10 socket and pull out the bleeder i'm pulling this thing completely apart because we're going to soak everything in the ultrasonic cleaner so now we can pull out these two clips you can see one end is bent on both of them and that'll release our brake pads. So if you need to do a brake job on Argo, you just pull these two pins with the calipers on, pull the pins, slide the brake cal the brake pads out. It's super easy to change. We've got some needle nose. We're gonna just bend this little ear up. Pull one out and pull two. And both the brake pads fall out. Now we can split the two halves of this caliper. We have two six mil uh, size allens so we can use a six millimeter allen they're normally in here pretty tight Woo! all right we're going to see if this impact gun will take it off Ooh, got it Ooh, very nice you can see how corroded those threads are just from water and nastiness all right now with those two allens out and again we're going to be running this through as well with those two bolts off we can now half two halves of our caliper then you can see one piston there one piston there when hydraulic fluid comes in it moves from one caliper to the other through this little hole here and we have a little o-ring that we'll be replacing our kit comes with that o-ring so we're going to just throw that one away but this just provides fluid to both sides of the caliper and then there's little holes through there that push this piston out that's all it's doing so how we're going to get this piston out is i'm going to blow air through the bleeder hole or the you know i don't know which one was a bleeder hole but blow air through here but i got to block off this hole so I'm going to do that with a rubber glove and hold it like this. And this piston is going to blow out of there like a son of a gun. So you need to 
point it down so you don't smack yourself or throw it across the garage. There we go. Down. And there we go. Blows that piston right out of there. You can see water and junk was in here. These things was super nasty. Now we can take our pick and very gently inside here, it's hard to see, but there's that square cut o-ring right there we'll be replacing it on both sides get that out now we can thoroughly clean all this stuff we can look at our piston sides make sure there's no pitting or gouges because if it does have that we're going to have to replace them but these look really good so we'll just make sure to clean up everything we'll get her going in the ultrasonic cleaner and show you how we put it back together so we cleaned the majority of the grease off these because I want the ultrasonic cleaner to have a, the best chance possible to clean it. So these came out pretty good. I just took a pick and scraped all the corners and junk, all the gunk out of them. So I'm just gonna lay them down like this. This is the Harbor Freight ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I recommend a ultrasonic cleaner, but not the Harbor Freight one. It's a good one, but it doesn't fit much stuff. It's really small. I think this thing's like two liters or something, or a liter and a half. We're on Amazon. We're going to be upgrading ours with a 15 liter big mother because we can put, you know, a gallon in it. We can put one liter. You can put whatever amount of cleaner you want, but we can do big carburetors and stuff. That's where this one kind of falls short is the size. We're going to throw everything we have in there. We're just using Dawn and water. That's, that's the best thing you have around the house to use. I've tried Simple Green. It works okay but it seems to like to corrode parts a little bit after they come out like aluminum carbs. We'll have like a little corroding. And there's a little ball bearing that goes behind our bleeder. I didn't realize that on the other one, so I need to make sure to find that. And another thing I don't like about the Harbor Freight Cleaner is you can only run it for like 480 seconds at a time. But 480 seconds is all you can run this thing. So I like to run it about three to four cycles at 480 seconds and turn the temperature the heat on because this will heat the water as well and it gets super hot like hot enough you can barely touch it so we're ready to go you can see you know stuff you can see the junk coming off all those bolts immediately so you can say it does work good it's just oh yeah it, it works great it's just the size of it what holds you back and how long you can run it the ones on amazon you can run it for like an hour you can see it's really working and what we're going to do is run this two times like this then flip everything the opposite way and run it two more times at 480 seconds so the ultrasonic cleaner we ran it for around 20 minutes and halfway through i flipped everything this thing one thing about it she gets popping hot i'm going to use a set of needle nose to try to grab my parts out so there's one side Ooh, that'll get hot Make sure to get all the water out of it. Thing comes insanely clean. If you don't own one and you work on small engines, cars, anything, this is one of the handiest tools you can get. There's that other side. It's hot. It'll burn your hands, it's so hot. So we're ready to put the calipers all back together. We got them clean as we could get it. I always take them out of the ultrasonic cleaner and then clean out every crevice I possibly can with Q-tips just to make sure everything's clean. Make sure your cylinder's in good shape. There's no pitting, scratches, or anything because that's gonna cause hydraulic fluid to leak past this piston and then you're gonna have a leaky, leaky caliper. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is install these square cut O-rings into our caliper. Each side has one because this is a dual piston caliper. Each side has a piston. We're gonna start the square cut O-ring around. This is super easy to put in. We're putting it in dry right now it's popped right in there then we can dip our finger we have a little bit of brake fluid in the lid we're gonna just put a little bit of brake fluid around that o-ring go ahead and wet wet it up because that's going to help us to not get any pinches or anything when we put this piston in so now we can take this the open side faces up outward towards the pad make sure we're getting it in straight and then push it on down in there so now this one is good we can move on to the other one and get it all popped in there make sure you're not twisting the o-ring any and getting it all messed up because if you get a twist in it it's not going to seal correctly and you're going to have 
a leaky piston. Same thing, brake fluid around it. I'm using dot four, and the higher the dot on brake fluid, the more temperature it can handle. I'm gonna pop that in there, get it all straight. Now that one is installed. On this side of the caliper, you can see this is where our small O-ring goes. It has a, a hole in the middle where the fluid travels and then a lip around it. So we can do the same thing. Take our small O-ring, pop right down in there, and I still dab it again with some brake fluid because that is gonna help it seal. Now we can take and put our two sides together. So we line them up the best we can. I've also ran the bolts in the ultrasonic cleaner. Snug one side up. So now we can put our small ball bearing down in the left hand side of this caliper. You can see it sitting down in there. And then we can thread our bleeder in. We're just getting everything hand tight because we're gonna have to bleed out the whole system since we've had everything taken apart. You can put the bleeder on either side, the way this caliper is designed, uh, but we're doing it on the outer because this is a left-hand caliper on your left braking system. Uh, so we want the bleeder to be on the outside and the line will run off this so we can install our banjo fitting once it's on the vehicle in this hole. I'm going to go ahead and thread a banjo fitting in there because that's just going to keep dirt, you know, any kind of loose dirt from falling down in it until we get to bleeding them. Now we can install our brake pads. These are in okay shape. Might need some new ones later, but... We're gonna go from the outside in. We go so far, then we can slide our other one in. Make sure you have the pad facing in. So there's our two pins installed in there. Now I take these needle nose pliers and bend the, the ends up. And there we have a fully rebuilt caliper ready to be installed on the Argo. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Uh, I hope this helps somebody out that wanted to, you know, just having issues with their brakes on their Argo. Uh, this is the Magnum 8x8. This is a 1992 model. I would assume a lot of the Argos are set up in this same way, uh, but I can't vouch for that. Uh, super simple to pull apart. You're going to put them back on the same way you pulled them off. Uh, but real quick, uh, simple process. I think it was $45 a set. This one's more expensive than other Argos I've heard because uh, this one's starting to get a little rare and it's an older model. So you may even, if you have a newer Argo, it's a lot cheaper than that. This was about $90 a kit and you can do it with basic tools at home. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure to check out links in the video description. Also, if you're an Argo guy here and don't know about our channel, make sure to check out the playlist where we pulled this complete completely down and going to rebuild it up with uh, maintenance and everything. So uh, check out the channel, a lot more on there. So thank you guys for watching. We love you and God bless.